Hey guys, what the heck is going on? Sam here. So coming out today with yet another goat deck profile. Um, I really do hope that you guys are having fun with this segment. I've had an absolute blast just kind of cranking out these uh, goat decks for you guys. And uh, not only just, you know, the goat decks, but the other, you know, formats like O2 and other retro Yu-Gi-Oh formats. Um, I've really been trying to, uh, you know, just re revive this channel here recently. And I really do appreciate all the support and all the feedback and stuff. So let me know if you guys like seeing this segment and I will keep cranking them out for you guys. I've had fun just... Um, you know, putting out all my decks and ideas and stuff that I've kind of compiled over the years and really just put them out for you guys to check out. So hopefully um, you guys have gotten something from this channel, whether it's a deck that um, you didn't know about that you're now playing or if it's a card tag or choice that I kind of mentioned in a video, that would absolutely make my day. Um, so feel free to like, subscribe and all that good stuff and let me know um, if you guys are enjoying the videos and I will keep them coming for you. So today we're going to show you guys a really, really cool deck. Um, this is one of my favorite rogue decks of the format and I say rogue because um, this is definitely not a deck that you will see um, in abundance at a GOAT format tournament. You um, may see one every once in a while. And hopefully more after this, you never know. But um, it's definitely one that is not as popular. Not because it's not good, it's just not as popular. There's for sure like um, dozens of other GOAT decks that are, you know, more popular than things like this. <laughs> but um, you know what? This is a really, really fun deck to say the least. And it's very techy. And if you want to throw your opponent for a huge loop game one, then play something like this because it will take them a little bit to really kind of figure out how to play against it. And uh, it's just a really fun deck like that, guys. Um, so yeah, we're going to get into this and um, I'm going to show you guys this profile. Let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, so let's just hop into it. So there's a few different reasons why I wanted to play this deck. And this deck is <laughs> really, really cool in the fact that you can um, utilize spell counters. Yeah, it doesn't rely on spell counters by any means, but it definitely um, gives you a one-up on the fact that you're allowed to utilize spell counters because chances are your opponent won't be playing a deck that um, you know can abuse spell counters like this one does. So the, uh, the first card that made me want to play this deck was this card, a Magical Marionette, and I'm going to read this card for you guys. So it's a level 5, 2000 attack. It says, each time you or your opponent activates a spell card, put one spell counter on this card. Increase the attack of this monster by 200 points for each spell counter on this card. Also, you can remove two spell counters from this card to destroy one monster on the field. Now, there's a few different things about this card. So, we only play two copies of this because uh, I played one and then I played three. One, you can't really, you can't search it and you want to make sure that you see it. Three is kind of a little bit too cloggy uh, just because it is level five and it, you know you have to tribute something for it um, but uh, I want it so I felt like two was great and um, a few other things about this is the fact that you can put spell counters on it each time you or your opponent activate um, spells and there's not a cap so you can get this card up to like you know 26 28 3000 it usually won't go over 28 usually um, because you'll want to take off the spell counters and destroy your opponent's stuff but um, this can get big enough to like run over things like your opponent's Chaos Sorg or Jinzo or you know any of that kind of stuff so it's really really cool in that aspect um, and the fact that it's not once per turn on its effect is really cool too um, I really enjoy cards that aren't once per turn if you guys watch this channel you know that I just like see cards like this and I'm like whoa that is really broken let's find out how to just break it even more so I really like this card um, and it's a really 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 cool card and it, there's a lot of interaction with this card and a lot of other cards in the deck so uh, yeah we're gonna keep rolling with this now next is a card that you guys are probably not like um, you know this card is Brad's Breaker of the Magical Warrior so the reason why uh, what really 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 kind of made my decision on making this deck was whenever I had seen this card on a replay in YGO Pro. I'd seen this card for a while and then kind of had had it in the back of my mind. I was like, okay, let's build a spell counter deck. But one time I was playing on YGO Pro and I had my breaker out on the field and my opponent had special summoned something like a Prince Magician. And then I put a spell counter on my breaker and then me and him both were chatting for a second on the chat and we were like, whoa. And I was like, yeah, I know what deck I'm going to build next because it was just really, really cool whenever that happened. So Prince Magician says, I'm going to read it for you guys. If this card is summoned target one face-up monster on the field that you can place a spell counter on, place one spell counter on that target. So it's not like a you can. It's like a if this card hits the field, place a spell counter on a card. And it's really, really cool. Even if your opponent summons one. <laughs> I didn't know that. So um, we played three copies of this card because you are allowed to um, float into itself. And what's really cool about this card, actually, I'm going to read its other second effect too. This card is destroyed by battle. You can special summon one level two or lower spellcaster or monster 
from your deck and face down defense position. A few things that I want to say about this card is you can go apprentice into apprentice into apprentice, and then you can go into something else. It special summons it in face down defense, which is really, really, really cool because you're allowed to special summon in face down defense some things like Magician of Faith, which is just absolutely broken in this deck. Apprentice Magician is really cool because you can just ram... Um, you know this card into something that your opponent has that you can't destroy and then you can put a spell counter on something like this and then you can destroy it that's just one you know small interaction obviously there's like a million different interactions with this deck um but yeah it's really really cool and the fact that every time that it's summoned if this either one of these three are on the field then you can put a spell counter on them so i really like that aspect of it and the fact that it can special summon things face down in defense, like Magician of Faith. Also things like Magical Plan. I play only one copy of this card. Kind of like with this card and with a lot of different other things that I test, I'd like to play all different ratios. 3, 2, and then 1, and I cut it and see if I miss it. And I really just liked it at 1 because it's not something that you can really utilize too much. Um, only, but you need it when you need it, if that makes sense. Like you can float into it from this, or you can float into it from things like Mystic Tomato. Usually you won't go into it from Mystic Tomato. Most of the targets from Tomato will be either Apprentice Magician or something like Sangan, which can like assert the majority of your deck. I just want to point that out. But um, yeah, so this card is really cool. What this card does is you can put one spell counter on one on each face-up card on the field that you can put a spell counter on. It's a flip effect. So um, there are certain times when like you see this card when you don't see these, and that's really why I just wanted to keep it one because it's searchable by like you know multiple different things saying and tomato or prince magician so i really felt like one was a great um you know ratio for this and also you can abuse this cards with thing like sukiyomi sukiyomi is just great and obviously like abusing things with flip effects like these so um yeah and what's really cool like i said is this isn't a flip effect so obviously any monster can get knocked but this won't banish all the copies of the deck out, out of the deck because it's not a flip effect monster um so yeah there are a lot of different um interactions with this deck this isn't the only combos that really go on in the whole deck because this is only like 10 cards of the whole deck and you might be like oh well you know you got 40 cards in the deck but we do play a ton of spells in this deck which go along with this i want to say elite almost half of the deck is spells like 17 or 18 cards of this whole entire deck is spell cards so you're allowed to abuse things like this so anyway guys we're going to get into the rest of the profile for you all um that is the kind of the base of where this deck had came from so um the rest of this deck is just staples and tech choices that i decided to put into this deck to make that combo flow even better for y'all so next we play three copies of thunder dragon and three copies of soul exchange now hear me out for a second this is kind of a weird tech i've played this tech choice in monarchs for a really long time because it allows you to play things like bls and monarchs because it puts light fuel in the grave um, immediately and the majority of your other monsters in your deck are dark monsters so um, I wanted to play BLS and uh, if my faith ended up getting knocked I wanted to make sure that I kind of had a backup so as long as you see one of these copies before this you'll be good because the majority of your monsters in this deck are light in that aspect so I like playing soul exchange because it makes it to where it's easier to summon something like this um, and you don't have to just tribute for it or bring it back with Call or the Haunted or Premature or something. Um, so I really, you know, do like, you know, that whole combo and that aspect of it. It just makes it to where this is live more because of this. This is live more because of this. This is live more because of this. And this is live more because of this. So it makes it to where this whole entire thing just kind of works together even better. And not only um, that, but, you know, Thunder Dragon is just amazing because it allows you to have a duo fodder in your hand it deck thins by two and it puts a light in the grave and there's just tons of different reasons on why thunder dragon is an amazing card in go format so um yeah that's pretty much why we're playing those tech choices next we play two copies of sukiyomi because for one um, it's a dark monster it is a spellcaster but you can't special summon this card so that doesn't really matter but with sukiyomi you are able to um, abuse things like this and this obviously um, that's, you know, not new news to anybody hardly, but if it is, let me explain. Tsukiyomi will flip these face down, and then you can keep flipping them face up. Tsukiyomi can flip them face down for free, and you can keep this loop going, putting on spell counters, or just adding back spells. Obviously, Tsukiyomi is great because it's a dark monster, and we do play BLS. Obviously, we play two copies of Nobleman and Crossout. Suk and Knock will out any monster in the game if it's face up at that time. Um, and yeah, Tsukiyomi is just really great in that aspect. So the rest of the deck that I'm going to show you guys, the majority of it anyway, is spells. 
Um, and then we'll show you guys a few different other monster tech choices and then a few traps. Um, so first we play these three, Pot Graceful and Duo. Um, this is just, man, it's just pretty much a staple. Um, one thing that I do want to say about Charity is if you have two copies of um, your Marionette, you know, you can throw one away. Um, and obviously this goes great with Thunder Dragon. Um, so yeah, Charity is Charity. Um, then we play one MST. And then we play Snatch Steel, which is ends up having just great interaction with things like Marionette and Thunder, Thunder Dragon and stuff. If you just want to steal your opponent's monster and tribute it and not leave his face up on the field. So, um, yeah, that's another way of how you can get Marionette just on the field even easier. Um, premature Burial. Most of the time when you activate Premature Burial, it will be on things like Exiled Force, which I'll show you here in a little bit. Or, you you know, Premature things like Marionette, Breaker or BLS. That's pretty much like your, your main targets. Or you can premature Sangan and just kind of put pressure on your opponent. So premature is great in this deck. Then we play Heavy Storm. Heavy Storm is Heavy Storm. It's a spell. Um, we play two copies of Upstart, which are spells which go along with Marionette uh, because you want to make sure that um, you can kind of just, you know, fill her up with spell counters and, you know, utilize her in the way that you want and then it just deck thins anyway. So yeah, two copies of Upstart Goblin. Now I'm going to show you guys a cool tech that I like playing in this deck. Is my body is a shield. I only play it um, at one. I actually side another copy, but I like my body as a shield because um, most people are going to play things like Mirror Force and Ring of Destruction, but um, this outs that, and I really, really do like it in that aspect. Um, and you know, it outs things like Sakuratsu armor and you know that kind of stuff. If your opponent um, is playing spells and traps that will destroy your monsters, it can out that. Also, my body as a shield is great because if your opponent activates Knock and you have something like Faith. Uh, my body's shield will negate the knock because knock says it has to destroy and then vanish. Um, so yeah, I really do like my body's shield. It only has one copy though because uh, you know it just can kind of get cloggy. Or you really just kind of want to save this for the perfect time um, for whenever you don't want your opponent to um, destroy your stuff. You could play things like Book of Moon to out things like um, you know Ring of Destruction and Mirror Force and Sakurai and stuff, but. Uh, that just kind of gets weird with the spell counters and stuff. But I do like the fact that this is a spell and you can utilize this in this deck. Next we play two copies of Rhoda because, again, it is a spell. And then we play one Exiled Force for spot removal, DD War Lady for kind of the same reason. And then we play one of my favorite techs in this whole entire deck. This is one that is not a light or dark. It's a win, but it's definitely worth mentioning and definitely worth playing in this deck. Now, this effect is really, really, really cool. What it says is... Um, once per turn, you can remove up to two move from play up to two spell cards from your graveyard. This card gains 300 attack for each removed until the end of your opponent's next turn. So if you guys are familiar with a card called Bazoo the Soul Eater, this is kind of like Bazoo the Soul Eater, except for it banishes spells instead of monsters, and it can get up to 2,000 attack, and it's searchable off of Rhoda, and Rhoda is a spell which kind of plays more into the whole, um, you know, marionette combo and stuff. So I really do like this card. The fact that you play like 17 or 18 spells in the deck is really good because um, by turn two, this, deck, this card's always live. If not turn by turn one. So um, yeah, so I really, really do like that card in this deck. Um, and then we play three traps because, man, you just got to play these. Just call ring and um, Mirror Force, Call the Haunted is good to bring back things like Marionette and, you know, BLS and Sangan and that kind of stuff, you know. Um, obviously for, you know, a lot of different things. But, um, yeah, oh, one other thing that I do kind of want to add. So if you guys aren't familiar with this combo, um, it's one other way that you can kind of utilize with any flip effect, but I like to utilize with a uh, Magical Plant in this. On your end phase, you can activate Call the Haunted, bring back this thing from the grave, and then, you know, stand by main, during your main phase, flip it over, and then you can flip it up, put a spell counter on something, and then utilize your breaker or your marionette. So um, that's obviously with any flip effect, with any deck that plays Call, Flip, and um, Tsukiyomi. So anyways, that is the main deck. I'm going to get on to the side deck for you guys. In the side deck, we play another copy of My Body as a Shield because um, I mean, I, this card is just really good in this deck, but you don't want to not have a use for it whenever you have it. Um, if you... Um, see that your opponent is playing multiple Sakuratsu armors, which everybody doesn't play Sakuratsu armor. Everybody does play Ring and Mirror Force. But if you see that your opponent's playing like multiple Sakuratsu armors, or at least one, you can maybe sign in as a, you know, a second copy of this. So that's just another, you know, tech. I've only done that like a few times and it made it to where, you know, it's just kind of a little bit more useful. So 
Next we play three Book of Moons because it is a spell and if you're playing things against things like um, you know go control or whatever obviously you don't want to flip your own monsters um, it gets kind of weird with spell counters um, but uh, book of moon is just um, you know a really great card in that as, in that aspect I've never cited it in all three but it's in the side deck in case you need all three um, so like every other deck profile that I do uh, I'm not gonna like BS with you guys and put in 15 side deck cards that you may or may not even use I'm only gonna show you guys the ones that are actually useful so um, yeah, three copies of Book of Moon. This is a really kind of trolly slash techie card. If you guys are playing against um, a Chaos deck, then this can just be the best Neg one that you've ever played in your life because you can banish either all of their lights or all of their darks and some other monsters or whatever. And then also at the end of the day, it's a spell card. So um, this card can be a blowout against some Chaos decks if your opponent just is needing to summon a big boss monster and then they can't get over um, your um, marionette because they can't summon a Sork or a BLS or you know something like that. So this card's are really, uh, really good in that aspect. Um, then we play one copy of Electric Snake. You guys have maybe heard me talking about this card before, but any deck that plays lights and darks and kind of has somewhat of a light and dark engine and you know that kind of stuff or you play any Chaos Monsters, this is a great side deck card because if your opponent's playing um, certain cards that make this card even better, then uh, why not play it? I'm going to read this card for you guys. What it says is, um, when this card is sent directly from your hand to the grave, graveyard by your opponent's card effect, you can draw two cards. So that's things like Duo, that's things like Morphing Jar, Spear Reaper, Thessalus Monarch, you know, things like that. If you're noticing that your opponent's playing cards like that, you can put this card in because at the end of the day, it is a light monster that you can utilize for things like BLS. Um, so Electric Snake is really good in that aspect. Um, it's kind of a really trolly card when your opponent activates Duo, and then you end up pitching, pitching this off the Duo, and then they wanted you to go Neg 1, but they made you go plus 1. <laughs> so that's funny. Uh, one copy of Jinzo, because we're playing Lights and Darks, and the fact that we play like three traps in this deck is really, really great. Um, I like Jinzo, and this card can absolutely steal games. Um, you decide that in it, if your opponent's playing like heavy trap decks, or if they're playing Burn, Obviously, these will go with burn. You'll side out your three um, traps because it's probably not going to be attacking you. Uh, some of your force is not going to be as useful. Ring of Destruction, you don't want to help kill yourself. And, um, yeah, so you'll side out your three traps and you'll put in your three roll decree for burn. And that is um, the end of the side deck. Um, I don't think I have 15 here. I just really didn't want to show you guys cards that were kind of useless. I'm not going to lie. So, um, hopefully, you guys like this deck. Let me know what you think about it. And um, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Let me know if you test it out and how it goes for you. It's a super, super, super fun deck. Um, I can't tell you guys how much fun I've had with this deck for sure. Um, let me know down in the comments what you guys think. And feel free to like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And uh, we will see you guys later.